Hello guys and how time flies. We're here in week number seven of season two of 2024. Starting off with Queen versus Mind. Let's go game number one. Bring up the lineup here. Mind, Light, Royal, Snow, Bisu, Bass, Sulky, Queen, Saxory. And once again on Troy here for game number one. This should be an excellent first match, guys. Unfortunately, Shun is not joining me today. He didn't show up to our regular scheduled time, and I've got lots of things to do today. So we're going to be going on a little solo adventure here. But I'll leave his link in the description down below if you miss him. You want to see him back? Feel free to carpet bomb his comment section. Let him know not to miss another KCM. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a fun opportunity to test my solo casting skills. We've been doing a lot of solo casting on the side uh, for the Daily Dose series. I release almost every single day a cast from the ladder so lots of practice there no worries about doing a solo cast here but we do miss Shun of course he's become a real part of this cast but oh gosh Queen he's gonna start off here with an early pool not gonna go for a regularly timed hatchery here and a gas Are we just going to cancel yeah okay would have been getting a little crazy if you wanted to keep that gas going, but it was just for the 10th drone and the extractor trick. And this build has become a lot more popular recently with the prevalence of 8 racks, but mind smart as usual. Going to metagame Queen here and go for a wall in on his own ramp. He should be putting down a supply depot actually below the refinery on his side of the map and plugging this little hole here with an SCV and that creates a very strong wall in which can't usually be broken by just a few links in the early game and oh my goodness is he gonna cross map scout here dude this is an end scout from mind he's gonna completely miss these links that are popping out four links are gonna head to the front six links in fact are gonna head straight across the map here I believe and he might completely miss this. If he doesn't have an SCV in this wall, he will just die. You have to have the SCV there. There will probably only be one Marine. He actually needs more than one SCV. Is he going to catch this? Oh god, is he going to see this? He sees the links. This is big, 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 big scout here. Mind is going to have to pull like two to three SCVs at least. Get into this wall and try to hold here with some repairing and some fighting. Can he get there in time? It's really, really close. He just barely makes it. SCV can be targeted here though he's gonna go after that first SCV he runs inside my not getting in position there he had a little bit of extra time but the SCVs of course are difficult to maneuver pretty good surrounding there with the SCVs and the one marine pops out here he's gonna have to get those SCVs in front of this marine try to plug up this hole once again however back at home queen not producing any more links he's just going into his game with some Good damage going on to the Terran so far. He can't even get more here in the main base if he's careful with these lings. Uh, if he doesn't get surrounded by SCVs. And while the Marine Count is still building up here, he does have to be wary of more lings coming out. Okay, he does see more lings coming. Four more lings are going to be produced here by Queen. He's going to be able to put more and more pressure onto the front here. Keeping the Ling alive in the back of the main as long as possible is a really good move here. But looks like finally that will be cleaned. And only four Lings remain. So was this enough damage in the end? I think so. I think Queen's going to be feeling pretty good about his position. Um, considering that there was that wall at the front. And we went for this early pool. We went for this uh, nine pool. We got, I think, enough damage here. This was supposed to be countering an 8 racks. The fact that he got this much damage against a Wallen is fantastic. There's the Spire coming down now. Uh, feels a little bit late though, perhaps. We've already got 200 gas in the bank. Um, you'd like to be throwing that down right as 200 gas uh, builds up here. Was there some sort of mistake by by Queen? Was he getting a little bit nervous during the, the fight there? Because now there's an opportunity maybe for Mine to push across and force some sunken colonies. It's going to be coming out. 
A little bit late. We're almost here at five minutes. It's just single racks production here, and the academy is finishing up now. So, of course, mind is a little bit slowed down. Usually at five minutes, you'd be pushing out with you know, eight Marines, two medics. But here, mind is pushing forward with a very small contingent of naked Marines. Just five Marines and no medics. Going to be able to force at least one sunken colony, it looks like. And that's going to slow down Queen quite a bit. Look at this. Five minute 30 looks like that Spire is going to be finishing up. And Queen going to take a base in the top left while sniping down those assimilators. Breaking those out. He will be closing off the top left hand corner. Making that into a little island base. And this is something that is unique to Troy. The ability to create a situation where there's only one defensive position by ground for the Zerg player. You don't have to worry about a regular Marine uh, bust anywhere except for this natural. Of course, we still have to worry about dropships, but as long as we've got plenty of Mutalists around, lots of Overlords spread everywhere, uh, checking out any of those pathways that mine could be using to send his dropships out on the map, it's a pretty good situation for Queen, really. Once you've gotten to this point where the assimilators are down, well, assimilators are not quite down yet, but it's on the way, and there's really no way for mine to stop that at this point. I think Queen's going to have a pretty good time here with the third base tucked away in that top left. Should be able to get onto that three gas economy pretty quickly. But where does the fourth gas come in? Are we going to do another base down in the bottom right hand corner? Are we going to set up another island down there? Perhaps at the center left, maybe? Would be a little bit closer. Remains to be seen here. Queen sending out the mutas. Let's see how much damage he can get done right now. But his position is looking good. We're very close in the supplies right now. And mine being forced to go into a factory here. He not he does know that he needs some additional tech. Uh, all that Queen needs to do is defend on that one high ground. Um, with an adequate number of sunken colonies. And it's probably not going to be broken by just pure marine. Coming in, getting about 4 or 5 SCVs here. Just taking a little bit of damage on those mutas. Only about two or three of those turrets able to fire after taking out that one. So he's done a good job here. Gonna come in, take out another turret, open up this position, and he's gonna force actually mine to go across the map. This is a great situation for Queen because he already has three sunkins on the high ground. As long as he makes those in time and they finish up in time, he should be able to hold on here without bringing any of his Mutalists home. It looks like he will bring the Mutalists back now. Realizing that this might not be enough to hold mind. I'm gonna bring all the mutalists to bear here. Buying a little bit of time for himself to reset uh, reset those turrets. Get those turrets back up and operational. Starport is on the way. Do we have an armory here? I don't see it. No armory just yet. We haven't seen the transition from Queen yet either. No Hydralis Den, no Queen's Nest that I can see. And so, Valkyrie is going to be really, really strong here. However, we need something like a tank to pair with that. If we want to actually break Queen here. The high ground is very strong. And look at this. He's just going to dive right on top of these turrets. And force Mine to go across the map once again. Mine doesn't have a choice right now. Well, he's got a choice. He could come back here with all of his Marines and try to push these Mutalists away. But instead, he's going to go across the map. Try to break the front right here, right now. Four sunken colonies on high ground. Is this enough to hold Mind? Mind has no other choice but to attack into this position. He can't attack top left. He does not have the dropships necessary for that just yet. SCVs are being sent back, but they're just going to go into the meat grinder here. Marines similarly running up this ramp. It is a bit of a meat grinder as well. He's gunning down the sunken colonies very well, though. Targeting those the best that he can, but the mutas are getting insane damage. And they're really starting to pick these off. Good job by Queen. Focusing down the Marines that are being targeted by the sunken colonies. And now it's just all Queen all day here. Nothing left for mine to do. He finally finishes that 
armory, but he doesn't even have a Valkyrie out here to deal with the Mutalisk counterattack. The turrets aren't done either. Oh man, Queen is going to rip him apart. Mine just falling flat on his face in this game. Unfortunately, the Valkyrie does come out. We'll get a volley, but it puts itself in danger and gets picked off. Queen getting that Valkyrie right there. There's really nothing left for mine, and he does tap out. GG is called a quick game on Troy here for our first match of the night. Bit of an unfortunate turn of events here for Terran in game number one. Mind had the build order win over Queen, but not able to hold his front. Being a little slow with the SCVs. And Queen gets a huge advantage. He rolls out a pretty good strategy from or on Troy as well. So able to grab that first win for Zerg. And now it's going to be Snow sent out. Dude, again with the amazing lineup here on the side of Protoss. But these other races are starting to put together some better and better lineups, of course. Queen, not uh, not performing at the highest level as of late. He's been kind of on and off recently, but Soul Key, having him in the KCM, always a great thing. Of course, Light and Royal there in the Terran squad as well. Very strong lineups all around here. And Probe making its way across the map. Looks like a overpool from Queen. Very standard opener here from him. Will we see a Nexus first? No. Forge going to be thrown down here by Snow. And without the, the, the drone coming across the map, you could potentially get away uh, with the uh, Nexus first. Wow, the blocking here from Snow. So annoying again there with the block. Finally going to get it down? No, again? Man, that is so frustrating. And let's see how many lings were actually forced to be made here. He's uh, checking these eggs. He sees two lings going to pop. Will he send them directly across the map? Two lings, not really enough to stop a cannon. He actually is going to send them back. So he definitely could have gotten away with the Nexus first here. But going for the safer play. Going to be throwing down that gateway now with the cannon behind it. And Queen, with only two lings, he's made the right choices here as well. Going to go ahead and just build the bare minimum of lings to chase this probe around his base. And focus on getting out his third base and taking this into a solid mid game. Now, getting rid of this probe is of the utmost priority. He definitely wants to shut down the information that's flowing in here for Snow. As long as he's got this probe alive here, and he can keep checking on the eggs, he'll know how many lings are being produced, and he'll be able to make the right decisions with his early zealots. He'll also be able to see when the layer starts, and there it is. He sees the layer. He knows that it's a pretty normally timed layer here and that it's very unlikely that we'll see a Hydralisk bust this game. So he can adjust accordingly and get ready for a very standard game. Let's talk about Blitz Y as a map. This map has some interesting features. We've got that big island base there in the center right that has a lot of gas, a lot of minerals available, but is very hard to hold because of the catwalk that's above it. A lot of splash spells like Storm can deal huge, huge damage from that high ground. Of course, Dragoons just placed on the top of the high ground as well can deny a lot of the mining uh, for a Zerg player in that center right. But we end up seeing a Zergs actually take that center right a lot more often because it is very hard to hold all pathways on this map. It seems like a very skinny map. But the middle of the map on the left-hand side is quite open. Setting up lurkers in the center left on the high ground does not guarantee that you can stop the Protoss from coming across. Uh, you have to spread out really, really wide. 
to control the uh, pathway on the right side of that high ground and that's where a lot of the difficulties can come in um it's not too difficult to get up to you know four or five base here as either the zerg or the protoss but taking the sixth base either the center left or the islands on the center right is where a lot of the problems can come in we'll see if we make it to that sort of late game stage but we've seen a lot of great games on this map in pvc which have gotten to those sort of late late game stages uh, and i don't think we've ever seen a full mine out here on this map yet but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Double Stargate here from Snow. Is sniffing out a potential mutilist play from Queen, but that's not the case, I don't think. Second gas is just now starting. This is a, a pretty normally timed second gas. And let's see if a Hydralis Den uh, gets started here soon, or how many mutilists queen will decide to make i am assuming he's gonna go for just you know a couple pairs of scourge and hydras and there's the hydralis den um we'll see how much snow decides to commit oh he loses the first corsair that's huge however this could bait queen into making a whole bunch of scourge and meet us and trying to you know bulldog the protoss player here um, if he makes a lot of meters that could be completely countered by this mass corsair play he's gonna fly into the main let's see if he sees the second stargate he's gonna see some corsairs is he able to identify that this is two stargate right now he might have he absolutely might have let's see if hydra start to pop out here creep colonies being placed and a spore colony goes down this is some great play by queen adding the spore colonies right now super super smart good stuff he's gonna start pumping out some hydralis here he may end up losing quite a few overlords nice connection there one of the corsairs does take a scourge hit but more spores coming up here and hydra's being pumped out on mass let's see if we can get some more scourge to connect it's really important that snow doesn't allow these to connect oh amazing micro there out of snow we've seen this before on the daily dose series but snow able to pull off some really wacky micro that i've never seen any other protoss player do some sort of like flicking micro i don't know what he's doing with that but he's somehow able to kind of slide backwards with the corsairs and attack at the same time it's really really wild stuff we'll see if he ends up doing it again here in this game it's uh i imagine very hard to utilize because we really haven't seen anybody else uh try to pull off that uh, sort of maneuver here but queen getting everything set up he's got a good drone count he hasn't lost too many overlords and for the most part this double stargate play has done nothing good ex or done nothing really for snow except slow down his overall his overall templar timing his templar are going to be much later the cost of the second stargate the cost of the extra corsairs is going to slow that down quite significantly halting the corsair production now zealots are going to come out they're thinking about taking this engage but if he takes the engage with the zealots he needs to get compensation as all the zealots fall he needs to kill a ton of overlords during that time and hydras are making their way across the map it's just about nine minutes here which is the timing when uh, usually you will see storm but with the double corsair play with the double stargate play did he delay his templar by too much there's one templar out in the front we've got a dt as well if he snipes the overlords as they come across the map the dt can hold everything but overlord speed is done lots more hydras coming here queen is taking this very seriously he wants to break through there's the energy for the storm but there's only one templar here six cannons are up can he save this natural zealots are coming out to fight that's so many hydras Templar here at the front do does he have the the upgrade okay he does a great storm there right as queen started to extend out towards this uh, uh towards the back cannons here 
These three cannons at the back are much harder to get to. You need to actually uh, commit quite hard to jump on top of those. And that's the moment when Storm is going to be most effective. Picking off the wall here at the front. He should be able to break through once that's done. When will he cast the Storm? He's going to wait for the last possible moment. When Queen decides to dive forward is when he'll be throwing down the Storm. He has to be very careful. Okay, he throws down a Storm preemptively here. Gets some good damage on these hydras but he might end up regretting that decision because that storm is going to be absolutely critical in holding this next attack here he comes targeting down one of the cannons there's only uh, uh there's only a few left almost picks off that second cannon six hatchery on the way here queen is gonna back off dude that was really really close for snow his heart's got to be pounding right now as he had to throw away most of his corsairs to try and pick off the overlords a desperate situation called for desperate measures he didn't get all the overlords but he managed to sneak out just enough templar to hold that attack and he's gonna move forward now looking for his third base is he going to be able to secure it here because queen is massive right now he has so many hydras he can totally afford to drone hard at this point take a fourth base he does not need to do another attack like that. He's got the forces to hold back whatever Snow throws at him at this point. Now, Snow's going to come across the bridges here, or the catwalk here. Looking for some counterattack pressure. Queen just sitting back and likely droning behind this. A few Hydras will have to be added on shortly, and... One of the great things about the Zerg economy, as you get your... Oh, wait a second! Muta's here. I was going to say, as you get your uh, Lurker upgrade finished, you can uh, just drone and make Lurkers at the same time. And the economy works out very, very nicely. But instead, he's going to throw in a whole ton of Muta's. I was not expecting this, and I don't think Snow will be either. He went double Stargate, so why would you expect your opponent to go for a big clump of mutas but most of those templar are gone and he's gonna come through here and pick off these templar and then maybe overwhelm the position the third base is under threat right now it could be picked off oh he's not going for what is he doing right now go for the templar is being really cautious here and the corsairs are on the other side of the map diving into the main base here is gonna go after the photon cannons only one cannon here in the main and he will pick that off very very quickly now going for a lot of these probes but not combining this with attack and an attack on the front instead queen what is he going to be doing behind this corsairs are coming back they're going to start to fight these mutas but that's way too many mutas for just three corsairs to fight hydra's moving out on the map queen what is the what what is the reasoning behind this? Why didn't we dive on the Templar and go for a Hydralisk attack here on the third? It's a little bit confusing to me right now. As Queen just backs away. He moves up towards the top left. I guess he's going to take a, th a fourth base here. And set up for a late game. More Mutas popping out. Is he going to remake these Mutas? He's making some Lurkers as well. I guess we're going to go into a late game here, guys. I was really expecting this game to come to a head with the uh, the addition of these mutas here. Not able to dive on top of one of these Templar. The Corsairs were actually sitting over top of the Templar. He wasn't able to target that. But he's coming in with a lot of Hydras here from the side. Okay, a great storm there. Preemptive storm trying to hit the mutas. Oh, he flies into another storm there on the backside. Takes a lot of damage. Plus two is done here, plus one armor as well for Snow. I believe only plus one attack is finished here for Queen on his Hydralis, and most of the Mutas have been so badly bruised. I don't know if another dive in is going to be possible here for Queen. I feel like he missed his window. He kind of threw away the window. He went by the window, do dove into the main base, breaking and entering here to Snow's main, and Snow defended his property very, very well. He did not take that much damage. And, I mean, Queen, he's on the back foot. Look at this wide area that he needs to control now. 
with Lurker. He's setting up on the low ground. He's going to set up some Lurker, I think, on the high ground to the left of the screen here as well. But this is such a wide area to control. Oh, a little counterattack of Hydra's coming around the backside, but way too many Zealots to deal with. You will have to back away from this. Templar going to be sniped. Pretty good job there with the small groups, the small contingents of Hydra's running around the map, able to grab a couple of Templar here. Lurkers are starting to push forward. It is tough to advance with Lurkers here effectively, but with only one Templar, it might be possible to make some headway here. Get over towards this fourth base of snow. You don't ever really want to split the map against Protoss. Uh, but we may be heading in that direction at the moment. Queen, I don't think that he can quite break snow. And I don't think that snow can quite break him either. Either way, it would be a gamble for either player to try and break through right now. Just some skirmishing will probably be on the menu here for snow. Come forward with those lurkers and Templar, cast a few storms, and then back away towards this fourth base. Set that up. Set up the bottom left. Same thing, of course, goes for Queen, setting up bases here in the top left uh, and the mineral only. Queen, with that wide arc of lurkers, he's left some space, though, for the Protoss player to get up on top of this high ground. The high ground going to be mounted here by Snow, casting storms on the advancing Hydras, but he's only got a few storms left. Just a little skirmish here. And Snow will back away from this position. It'll be up to Queen to move forward with those Lurkers. Take control of that high ground. And keep rallying to this position. Has some good Overlord spread around the right-hand side of the map. Making sure that nothing can sneak through and potentially drop his vulnerable main base right now. As the Defiler Mound on the way. Some more skirmishing here from Snow. Picking off Lurker after Lurker, just lowering that count as much as possible before he attempts a breakthrough anywhere. And he has fully secured this high ground now, which is a huge boon to the Protoss, uh, the Protoss position here. Diving forward with the Hydras, meets with a Storm. Snow so good, so, so good at skirmishing. Uh, in these Protoss versus Zerg battles. We're going to throw down some more storms here. Push back the armies of Queen and claim this high ground for himself. Now, we should see Snow take the bottom left, but he might opt to take the center left here. Because this position is so good on this high ground right now, it's very hard for Queen to counterattack past this force. And as you can see, the Protoss army can quickly and easily rotate to the right and cut that off. So, Queen is running out of options here right now. He's going to be able to get to Defiler for sure. Uh, sending forward a lot of cracklings now. What if you zealots are being held back for snow? He's going to send them in as soon as he clears the majority of these lurkers. Throwing down storms and just backing up. Dude, he's taking amazing trades right now. Snow is so good at this. Just the way that he's slowly backing up, casting the storms whenever the units are clumped. Waiting for the right opportunities to send in the zealots. Never allowing the zealots to fight head on with large groups of lurkers. And he's still kept the zealot number very, very high. He's only lost a few units here and there. And he's continuing to reinforce with Templar and Zealot. This is just classic, great Protoss play here. He's even cutting off the majority of these Lings, trying to make their way down the bottom left. I think only one Ling managed to make it through. That's still enough to throw a wrench into, you know, building cannons. But uh, as long as he's got one cannon built over there, he should be fine. Oh, this one Ling looks like it's going to just target down the, the Nexus and the probe will be able to deal with that. Meanwhile, Queen taking in an Overlord and a drone over to the center right. Going to think about expanding over to the island. Guys, we are in for a crazy late game here. Some Dark Swarms finally coming down here on the front line. Snow. Making sure that he has the assimilator in the bottom left-hand corner. I certainly hope that he decides to 
saturate that bottom left hand corner gas if you know what i mean now snow here shoving forward he's found a small break in the line for queen he doesn't have all of his stuff ready here all the lurkers in position to deal with this area and snow has actually skirmished well enough to this point where his army is huge it's massive and there's a hole here for queen queen dude he's making a ton of lurkers here in the right hand side but they're just not ready in time he's gonna lose so many hatcheries here in the center a lot of links popping out but these links are on a rally point that's just running through the Protoss army right now. Look at how many links are being lost without dealing any damage. He is going to bring forward the Lurkers, but this is a perfect opportunity to spam storms. Queen taps out. Dude, Snow is so damn good. He punches through there with just fantastic skirmishing. This is a great example of how to take on Zerg in the late game, how to skirmish with them. Just go back and watch that first engagement uh, in the center of the map when the Lings finally came out, when masses of Cracklings started hitting the field, and Queen just sent a huge army forward to try and surround, try to pick off that army of Snow, and the way that he backed up slowly confidently laying down the storms as he did so well done textbook play from snow really really great game there making up for some past mistakes um and some rough losses on that map very good job by snow i'm gonna jump into game number three game number three here with royal spawning in the top right hand corner snow in the bottom left i can't say enough good things about snow dude he is just killing it recently he really seems to show up in the kcm specifically uh, i don't see royal stopping him here but maybe he can show us something fantastic from this map citadel cross map ah I, that's gonna be tough man <laughs> the the deck is truly stacked against royal here i really want to see more zerg and terran victories in kcm because the protoss is so far ahead in terms of points right now but every single week the lineup has been insane protoss just bringing out the most stacked force and it doesn't seem like the the dice is rolling correctly the the cards are not falling the right way here for Terran or Zerg the luck is just not on their side for a lot of these games and Royal here finding out that he's cross map and look at this snow scouts cross map as well he sees everything here from Royal immediately knows now that he could have gotten away with a nexus first but he's just so confident why go nexus first when you're massively confident in this matchup and you can do stuff like this with your probe my goodness he gets the first kill there the micro here on the original probe the first probe so damn good he's gonna come in and try and get some more damage here. it's just crazy man it is crazy what these Protoss players can do, Snow in, in particular can do with this early probe, but Royal already going to be feeling a bit of tilt here now that he sees Snow down in the bottom left-hand corner. He's going to realize his odds of victory are much, much lower. It's just a simple fact in Brood War cross map. Not a good win rate for Terran versus Protoss in cross map. So he's going to try and roll with the punches here. See what he can do in this cross map game. Going to send out a couple of early Marines because a Zealot was skipped. But already we've got that Dragoon out. What will he do? Will he go for like a Vulture Marine push here? Is he going to 
get his uh, CC right away. Looks like a CC is about to drop. And there it is. He's going to try and skip a bunker here is what I'm thinking now. He's going to try and just stand on this high ground here with Marines and a Vulture. And see if he can't get away with making that bunker super, super late. Or not at all. Let's see what he can do. Okay. Dragoon going to come up this ramp. Makes that little fight there. Is he going to miss this next shot? No. He picks off one of the Marines already. Snow not taking any hull damage either. Getting a Marine. Basically for free, all of those shields will regenerate. And yes, Royal has avoided making a bunker up till now, but he will need one at this point. As more and more Dragoons are going to start coming out here. Royal's going to need some damage with this first Vulture. He's going to be looking for it now. Sending that Vulture out on the map. You don't want to send it directly in because the... Uh, Mines upgrade will be coming out here soon. You want to get good vision around the map. Okay, he actually stops building the bunker at the last possible second. Look at that. It's at 350 of 350, but it's not done. I don't know how Royal managed to make that happen, but he's going to cancel his bunker now. So, uh, what I said earlier is actually going to come to pass. He did want to skip this bunker, and he successfully avoided making it thus far. With mines out on the map now, he can add his second factory and skipping that bunker should be able to get that out a little bit sooner. Those extra factories will come out faster with that extra 100 minerals in the bank. Or he has 75 after the cancel. Will he go to three factories? Something we've seen a lot recently, like a very quick three fact. Or will he throw down a CC here. It seems like a CC is being thrown down somewhere in the main base there for Royal. Gonna go to a third base pretty quickly here. Hard to initiate a big attack on two base cross map. It's such a long rush distance. There's so many ways that the Protoss can get around your army and cut off reinforcements. And the reinforcement trail to get to the natural of snow will just be so, so long. He's trying to delay as much as possible. Oh, that's an eBay. I thought maybe that was a CC, but he's going to delay as much as possible. The next base is here of snow with the mines, but now we do have... Oh, 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 oh hold that thought. Vulture's going to get here into the main base. This is what I was talking about earlier. He needs to get some damage here. He's going to get three, four... Five, and maybe a six? No, five probes total. Really, really nice damage for those first two vultures after laying all their mines. Managing to get that much damage, five probes. Really, really good stuff here for Royal. And this is what he needs. This is the path here for Royal to where he could maybe take down Snow. He gets the early damage. He needs a nice... Ah, man. Losing a Dragoon here on the map. He needs a nice, smooth push to take his third base. And then a large massing of army and eventually taking it to snow across the map. We'll see if that comes to pass. We'll see uh, how smooth this base take is going to be. But snow here has not opted to get an early reaver which is a bit surprising where is the reaver from snow we expect to see it here but it might not be coming snow sometimes does try to switch up his style often to uh kind of counter dramatic or undramatic effect Often not able to pull out the same uh, skill, the same level of play without his reavers. But right now, shutting down all of the harassment attempts from Royal. There's the first shuttle. I don't see the reaver tech, man. I think it's, he's not actually going for it. I think he's doing something else. He's trying something out here. And... It might not be... Okay, there it is. Finally, a robotic support bay. This is a very late robotic support bay, though, dude. Is he even going to build a reaver? Is he just going to go into... Templar or, like, speed shuttle? What's going to happen right now? 
A little bit confused about Snow's play. Now, third base is on the way here for Royal. He's getting a nice setup at the front. He's got a couple of Goliaths ready for that shuttle and reaver to come through. It's just not in the cards right now from Snow. Snow is playing a different hand than he usually goes for. He's really playing a, like outside of his style right now. This is more of like kind of a best uh, style of play, more older style of play from best, uh, who's actually adopted more of the reaver style for himself nowadays. He used to be much more interested in going for play like this with just mass mass gateway a couple of shuttles mixed in maybe three four shuttles mixed in and trying to break the Terran on three and four bases but this is not the style we expect to see from snow we want to see him with the reaver slowing down the third slowing down the fourth base uh, building up that army uh, while the Terran player is struggling to deal with all of the harassment that's going on and eventually busting through uh, with just a superior army because of all the damage that's gone down from the early reaver but in this case not much damage at all royal is just cruising here in this game nine we're about to get to 10 minutes he's got his uh, third base up for quite some time now coming forward with the reaver and the shuttle he will get a great shot there killing two vultures and damaging a tank initially Looks like that Reaver will end up going down here. One target on that finishes it off, and he holds very, very nicely here. Dude, Snow is not showing us his best game here. A second robotics facility. Okay, he's definitely going for this mass shuttle style with huge, huge amounts of gateways, but dude, his economy is way behind where it should be. If you're going to try and go for this type of style... You need so much, so, so much minerals. And Royal is already on three bases. The fourth base is going to come up here shortly for Snow. He's transferring the workers already, so he will be ahead uh, in a moment here. But we've been on even bases for some time. And Royal, the supplies are reflecting that. Look at the supply right now. Royal, pretty much even at this point. And you cannot really hope to smash Terran with an even supply going for this style of play. It's just not the way that this game functions, that this matchup operates. You need to have higher supply. You need to have overwhelming numbers to break through with this pure gateway speed shuttle type of style. And Snow's just not there right now. He doesn't have a lot of defenses over here at the third base as well. That's pretty darn wide open. A drop is going to come through over here to maybe try to shut down center left as well. A big drop coming in towards the main base right now. Oh! Did he actually get hit by that? No. The Reaver did manage to survive. Uh, not taking the big damage that I thought it was about to take. The Reaver going to defend the Zealots here from the Vultures that are coming in. But Goliaths are now going to arrive and try to pick off this shuttle. Do we have that drop ship coming through? Nice snipe on the Goliath there. Going to keep that shuttle alive for a little bit longer. Bringing it all the way to the back with six kills. Oh my god. A huge, huge hit there. Meanwhile, Tank dealing some damage at the third base. Will drop a couple of Zealots just to deal with that. Whoa, did that tank actually just shoot? That tank just shot a Zealot that was insanely close. Might have been a little bit of a, uh, a glitch there. Sometimes things like that do happen. Oh man, he's going to drop the Reaver once again. Was kind of distracted here by these drops coming in. Dealing that damage. So Reaver going to be uh, solo here with 13 kills. And the dropship flying straight on into these Dragoons. That's unfortunate. He loses the drop. But the drop from Snow is also been cleaned up so even trade there and royal just what seven supply behind snow his position is looking better and better another base gonna come up here from snow but at the same time royal gonna move forward and take his mineral only so 
on curve here to explode on four bases and reach that 200-200 supply count at a very nice timing. Royal now ahead in supply. Dude, Snow is getting a little bit outclassed here. You can see how much he relies on the strong Reaver Micro in the early game. He's so, so good at it. At it. I'm really shocked to see him not going for that style and a playing off brand here and surprise surprise it's not really working out great against royal who is super super solid pulling off one of his own vultures there i'm not sure what that was about but another drop coming into the main triple shuttle here but so many turrets and a tank also set up in the main to deal with this do we have a storm Storm gonna come down on the natural great storm there But kind of whiffing on those SCVs that were coming from the main base. Whoa that tank Spinning around in a circle. I haven't really seen that before That's a disco tank there See how oh, dude he's still stuck Look at that disco tank There we go. He does I get unstuck there finally able to rejoin the fight and the factory count is amazing right now for royal he's gonna max out so fast still ahead on supply here the drop was pretty decent it did some damage maybe it can get in and deal a little bit more here though there are tanks set up ready to smash those templar the moment that they pop out maybe he can get one more storm to deal some more damage but Royal is going to max out. There's no two ways about that. He's going to max out very, very quickly. And he's going to start this push really, really soon here. Will Snow be able to block this? Can he prevent Royal from moving across the map and containing him at his natural? Because he does not have another rally point set up yet. It's a little bit too early for that to be the case. And... He's going to push in over here on the right-hand side. Try and deal a little damage here and there. Maybe stop this command center from building. Looks like he will at least accomplish that. War Storm's going to come out here. Picking off a few Goliaths. And stopping this command center from finishing. That's some, uh, that's some good damage right there. Slowing things down here for Royal. But Royal is now maxed. And I believe he's got 2-1. So he's going to start to head down this right-hand side. And all the storms were already cast. The shuttle was lost. There's not really a lot of tech here from Snow, aside from this Archon, I guess. Will he have the army to deal with this? Two Reavers are going to pop out. Getting some good shots so far. Snow. Two more big hits there. Two more tanks falling. And this is some really good holding here from... Snow, two shots more. One Reaver does go down. Another big shot here. Storm going down on all this. Dude, Snow has somehow shoved a lot of this stuff back. S Royal is not going to stop. He's going to keep pushing forward, but that was a lot of tank kills. Slowing this army down quite a bit. Taking a big tax here, a big toll on Royal's army as he starts to shut down this bottom right-hand corner. You can still build gateways down here and hold this area. I really thought he was going to push straight across the map and try to contain the main rally point, but moving this direction does allow Royal to snag a fifth base here. He's going to be able to take the center right while pushing this location, and that will set him up for a better long game here. Is going to have money for the foreseeable future for another max out should this army here die trying to break the bottom right. Gonna go ahead and drop some Templar out here. Trying to slow down this tank push just little by little. Reavers make their way over here. SCVs are under threat. Gonna be able to start picking off some of these turrets as well. Royal will have to lift and it brings some units to actually clear this out. A little bit unfortunate here for Royal is economy being shut down just slightly, but I think he's still 100% fine here at max out with some banks starting to roll in. 
As long as he clears this out eventually, gets rid of this Reaver. God, this Reaver's done a lot. 10 kills already. Finally does go down. But did a huge amount of damage there. Royal still pushing down here towards this bottom right. The Reaver just doing so much work. Nearly dead here. 6 HP. There we go. Finally does fall. And it looks like Royal's going to break this base. So Royal, if he gets down here, finishes off this base, and there's nothing that Snow can do about it, I think Royal is in a particularly good position to take this game. Starting to shove through the middle. Can he break the mineral-only base? The rally point is really close to this location, and Royal is bringing back a lot of his army to deal with this. Uh, tanks on the right-hand side. Tanks on the left as well. Gonna go ahead and run right up on top of those. Dude, these zealots are right on top of the tanks. He's gonna get on top of the rally point here. Picking off a lot of this. Big storm on the SCVs here at the mineral only. Too bad he didn't transfer that. Royal bringing back everything here, but his supply is rapidly dropping the gambit here. The counterattack gambit. Oh my god, the storm there. As those units turn that corner. Absolutely ravaging those unseach tanks, and Snow will now back off. But as the dust settles, the fact remains Royal killed bottom right, or he's killing currently bottom right, and he has center right as well. Maybe his SCV count was lowered quite a bit, but he's got plenty of money in the bank, and he's pushing forward once again. Snow, he needs to wipe out this army right now. And he needs to continue to take bases, dropping Templar, storming a lot of these tanks. Royal just backing away little bit by little bit, taking a lot of damage on the tanks, but not all of them dying here. So quite a few badly bruised tanks on the retreat. Now catching up to the Dragoons on this side. Another storm going to come down here on a lot of these SCVs. Oh my god, that's massive, massive damage. Will it be enough, though? Royals continue to push forward. Dragoons full retreat mode here, and Snow trying to take a base in the upper left. Can he hold any more bases at this point when he can't really combat the, the ground army of Royal? It's hard to see it happening. Going to bring things forward here. Try to break this army once again. Well, eating some mines, unfortunately, and diving on top of these tanks. That's a big clump of tanks. Oh, Royal making a big mistake here. Letting the Templar get massive value out of those storms. And Snow can now push over here towards the, the center right. Maybe he can break this base. Maybe he can, you know, at least kill these tanks over here. Drag a mine. Really nice mine drag there. One storm going to come down. Bit of a whiff, though. Missing the majority of those SCVs. Uh-oh. Losing a few tanks here and there. It's getting a little sloppy from Royal while he's trying to clear out this game. Was trying to end this one. Snow's going to get a base in the top left-hand corner. He needs to transfer probes there very, very soon. But his supply is so low. Can he protect the probe train in the top left? And fight this army in the middle of the map that's slowly taking more and more ground. It's going to come through with this shuttle. Where is he heading with this? Seems like towards the main base, but he loops back around here quickly, heading down towards the third. He drops some zealots. They instantly die. Not going to be able to get any more storms in that location. Too much defense is there. He's going to drop instead over at this Third, fourth base, excuse me. Great kills there. Wow. Reaver getting massive, massive damage. He's going to drop one more time. Get another shot off. But the Goliath survives. And unfortunately, the Reaver goes down. Not able to see how many kills were on that. But I assume it was a lot. Just smashing that economy of Royal. But will he be able to smash the army as well? His... Force is looking so small here. Only a few Dragoons. Small contingent of Zealots. There's the remainder of the force. Here we go. Snow has enough maybe to break through here. Can he get on top of the tanks? He's diving forward. Not a lot of Vultures in this fight. Only three here remain. Diving forward on top of the tanks. He's going to drag some of these mines, but that's not enough. 
not enough to wipe out the tank force here and snow will have to retreat that was really really close look at how low a lot of these are if there was a couple of templar or a couple of shuttles maybe in that fight he could have potentially dropped on top of those tanks and picked off a lot of them but unfortunately not in position with the shuttles to do so a lot of those survive with very very low hp Dude, this is getting really, really close now. 160 to 166. Still a great fighting force here for Royal. Um, and Snow is trying to break through anywhere he can. Drop in here with the Reaver on top of these tanks. Dude, is he going to be able to break this? It's getting really, really close now. He's going to take one more shot on that tank. Will not kill the tank, though. And the Zealots here on the left-hand side are going to try to distract while well, these Dragoons break this tank. But a D-Matrix at the very last moment. The repairing from the SCV will keep that alive. Uh, along with the D-Matrix. Templar are going to come up here. Storms will be laid down. Great storms by Snow. But, dude, this is just not, barely not enough. Okay, gets one more tank. He should be able to get this one too. No. That Dragoon falls as well. And Royal will continue to hold the center right. This is a butt clench moment of a game, you guys. This is getting really, really crazy. It's hard to keep your calm and cool when you're in these type of crazy, difficult situations as either Snow or Royal. You gotta have knots in your stomach at this point. You're so close to a win or a loss. And that might be the... the uh, mine connections that Roll needs killed a lot of those vultures before the fight even occurs only one tank there does get picked off and a lot of this army is going down including the uh the mining here at the center left but meanwhile royal just gonna go for the push he's gonna hit this base uh both these bases over here on the left hand side of the map and maybe just pull the cc uh, back and takes top left instead. DT here being quite the annoyance. But we'll get picked off by mines it looks like. Oh my god, the mine connections are great here for Snow. Eventually it does go down though. And now we've got no mining here for Snow. I mean, one base I think mining down at the bottom center. Um, a little bit of mineral mining at the mineral only as well. But all the probes are going to go down. Snow dropping to just 137 supply here, whereas Royal is beasting ahead 162. He's got so much trading this CC here at the center right for the two bases in the left-hand side of the map. Just amazing decision-making here for Royal. Really, really great trade there for him. Now going to come through with some more shuttles here. Let's see what Snow can do with this small force that's left remaining he's actually doing a pretty decent job but as the tank siege and the zealots start to disappear snow is running out of options here dropping below 100 supply for the first time this is going to be losing all the remainder of these dragoons and tanks here on the left hand side cleaning up a lot of those retreating units he's gonna send shuttles here towards that top left he should know that Royal has almost no mining left aside from this fresh base that he's just taken here at the mineral only. Dropping a last couple of Dragoons to drag mines, killing off two tanks. A pretty good trade there, but GG is called. Snow taps out and Royal takes that game away. Rolling on in into game number four. Soul Key going to be sent out here for the Zerg squad on Radeon. A great map, I must say. I think this is one of the uh, maps that will probably be played even 5, 10 years from now. Same with Vermeer, man. I think Vermeer is a fantastic map. A little bit high on the base count, but... This is a great addition. This is a little bit lower, the number of bases, but it's a fantastic map. I, you know, I, I can't really say that for sure, though. Five years from now, who knows what the meta will look like at that time and whether this map will still be relevant given the meta of the future. 
So we'll have to withhold judgment for that for for now, but it's great to see AMD pulling out some maps and commissioning them, keeping this game alive. Big shout out to them. Got Royal here, starting out with a barracks at the front, I believe. Okay, no, this is uh this is an interesting opener here from Royal. As you can see, he has a supply depot in the front with the barracks at the natural. Usually, if you're going to be walling in at the front, you will put the first supply depot out there, um, then the barracks, and then a second supply depot in the wall. But seems like Rose is taking a different approach here. He's going to build the second supply depot in the wall, the first supply depot in the main. Now, this does give you a little bit more optimized mineral income in the early game. Because your SCV doesn't have to go as far uh, to build that first supply depot, so you can get him mining um, a lot sooner. Uh, just doesn't give you as good of a wall, but I guess that's royal a risk that Royal's willing to take. He's going to take that little bit of optimization, and we'll see what he can do with that. Dealing a little damage to the first Overlord here. It will make it across the map, though. This is pretty standard now um, for Radeon. They are going to go ahead and send the first Overlord all the way across the map here against Terran. Uh, it's not really easy to, to pick off that first Overlord, even if you go for 8 racks. Uh, it can pretty easily get over to that side of the map. And now he's got full information here over the natural. And he's going to know how many Marines are being produced and where they're going. Um for the at least for the early game here now royal what's his follow-up going to be a cc here on the way gas being taken i think it's going to be a regular two racks push most likely with five marines moving out naked marines here at the front it's a little bit risky He's kind of obfuscating the position of those Marines, though. They could be walking across the map right now, and Solki just wouldn't know. He knows that they're not here in the natural. He doesn't know where they're at, though. And might be able to force out a good number of links here or a sunken colony, depending on how Solki's feeling. If he doesn't make any links, though, he could be in a lot of trouble. He builds four more. That's not quite enough to fight this Marine Force, but uh, as long as he kind of kites it a little bit and, and falls back away from it. Oh, God! Making a big mistake here. Loses two Lings immediately. Drone sent out. That could be lost as well. No more Lings are in production, but he must be panic-making Lings right now. Sunken Colony going to come down. Royal is in a fantastic spot. This is a really hard position for a Zerg player to bail themselves out of. He's going to lose at least, at the very bare minimum, a lot of mining time here. And the SCV in the front, dude. Blocking here. This SCV is doing so good. But the drones drilling on top of these Marines. Actually messing up their AI so much. Is he going to get a drone kill? He does get one drone kill. And the drones will head back to mining. Hey, not that bad. Really, really good control with the drone. Of course, the blocking with the SCV was fantastic as well. But overall, I mean, I would have lost every drone in that situation. I feel like Solki, one of the only players in the world who could have handled it that well, considering how bad the situation was. After he lost the two links and he's backing up, you can just easily completely lose the game at that point. But he manages to at least stabilize here he's got three drones in the natural mining minerals he's got uh, gas saturated at the natural he can make the mutas here non-stop and try to mute it all in if he wants to uh, he could of course try to transition as well but that's going to be a lot harder to do it's going to be a lot harder to pull off let's see what he decides to do here the scan comes down. He sees the Mutalists are uh, coming across the map here. They're going to be arriving in just a moment's time. And Solki will start this harassment. Let's see what he can do here. Um, he is definitely behind at this point. He needs to get something done with this. Doesn't have a third. He has hardly any mining at his natural. So, so low on that drone count here. He's been forced to make so many lings, and he's lost drones. Things are very, not, really, really not good here. 
Royal going to take some damage on these Marines. He does get the second turret up, though, critically on that ramp. And there's not that many Mutalists right now from Soul Key. So he has a moment here. Royal should be building a bunker. If I'm Royal right now, the bunker is such a necessity. I would build that without a second thought. We are in a great spot here. One bunker at the front is going to make the Ling attack so much less uh, scary. And um, here as Solki, you have to break something. So you've got to come in here, maybe snipe down some of these turrets, and then come in and stab with Lings in the natural. And with the bunker at the front, that Ling stab is so much weaker. See, he's building Lings right now. He's not really mining anymore with the drones. Constant turret production and a bunker at the front would be the perfect response here from Royal, but he's cutting a little bit of corners. Let's see if Solki can punish him for that. A base going to come up here in the top left-hand corner, it looks like. But this is desperation mode right now for Solki. He is so low on money right now, and he's sending out a... a, a Drone to get a base? He can't afford it. Look, he's got no money. 200 minerals in the bank. He cannot make this uh, extra base over here. And uh, he, his gas is banking up right now. 500 gas in the bank. He can't make enough meters to, to spend that. And he can't make a base in the top left-hand corner. So he's actually transitioning right now. He's added on a few more drones finally. And he's building the... Hydra Den and Queen's Nest as well. Going into that hive. He's going to try to get this transition going. But he's going to have, I think, lurkers before the third base is even done right now. Finally, the third base has started up there in the top left. But it's just so far behind the curve right now. And Royal is gaining in strength here. He's added on a bunch of barracks. He's going to be transitioning here pretty soon. An armory is coming. Well, are we going to build tanks right now? He's going to go for a tank push? This could be really, really scary. A tank Valkyrie? Tank Valkyrie push would be uh, devastating right now for Solki, who's trying to transition. Uh, but if he gets the Defiler out in time, that could, you know, give him a way back into this game. If it was just standard play from Royal, I feel, uh, it would be really, really hard for Solki to bring this one back. Uh, if he just starts, you know, making a bunch of vessels and pushing across the map and putting the pressure on everywhere, Solki would have a really, really hard time holding on to both naturals. But the way this goes is we're going to have a big power spike here from the Terran army. He's going to move across with a couple of tanks, uh, maybe two, three tanks, uh, and a couple of Valkyries. The Valkyries will shut down the Mutas, and the tanks are going to come to the front, try to break through... Whatever sunken line has been uh, built up here by Sulky, and of course the... Oh god, he's going to go in Greater Spire. He's realized what's happening. Defiler Mound, Greater Spire. He knows the Defiler's not going to be in time to stop this tank push. He's going to need to have another option here. It's going to be some Guardians that can help to hold off this Marine tank push. It's going to be a last resort here from Sulky in order to hold this back third gas finally coming online here this is so late for soul key but it is what it is he he's in a desperate situation everything is late right now he's gonna have to set up some lurker landmines here lurkers on hold position can he bait this army in if he gets a good bait here he could absolutely crush this oh dude he's gonna get it he is gonna get sick sick Lurker spines here. He's waiting for so long. He's waiting for the perfect moment here. What? What? He's waiting way too long. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, let's go. Huge Lurker landmine here dealing so much damage. Dude, Solki waited so long on that Lurker landmine. That was insanity. But it worked out beautifully. Guardians are going to be made here. The Mutas can come forward and try to snipe some of these tanks, but a drop in the top left. Royal hitting two places at the same time. So not opting to make extra Valkyries here. He's going to go for 
that uh, drop instead. The drop ship comes out. He's waiting on uh, consume here. Consume is going to be done in a second, but the lurkers all die. And the guardians are going to come here, but the marines are in position. He should be able to just wipe out the whole drone line. Uh, while the Guardians try to deal their damage. The Mutas are going to come forward here. He will clear out these Marines, but too much damage has been done. Way too much damage has been done at this point. And even though the army has been cleared, and this base has actually been saved in the top left as well, there are just no drones left mining here for Soul Key. If only he'd pulled his drones from the natural, maybe something could have been done here. Bring those drones back and at least saturate two bases, but you just can't hold on against a Terran player, even on two bases, uh, versus or with this few drones. The number is just not going to be there. It's, it's a numbers game at this point. Guardians are going to come across the map. Oh, the dropship could be ca caught here. He is going to catch that. He's going to get the moving shot on it. He can just gun down this drop. And every single Marine, as it pops out, that's a big moment. He even catches some uh, Marines moving across the map here, killing off quite a few of them. The Mutas are going to come across. The uh, Lings are coming here too. Maybe if he can just get to the front here. Oh, some... Dude, he's making... Oh, he got the he got the, the vessel. He's making a bunch of extra starports right now in order to deal with all of these Guardians. Wait, Guardians being made here. I thought he was going to go for Defiler and Lurker uh, and just try to Lurker push him in the natural, but he, instead he's making all of these Guardians. There's the uh, Defiler. Where are the Lurkers, though? What is this combination? Defiler and Guardian? It's just not a thing, and these Wraiths are going to come out and absolutely annihilate here. Where... Oh, God. God, this is it. This is it. Unfortunately, right as this moment happens, um, I think that Soul Key will realize that he's been outmaneuvered. A bunch of fire bats are going to come out to deal with everything under this Dark Swarm, and the Guardians will all be picked off. So unfortunate here that uh, Soul Key didn't transition this fully into just a Lurker and Defiler all in play here towards the natural because he just spent hundreds of like 800 gas on building guardians that just got wiped out and gg is called Ooh, what a game royal takes that one down but it was not an easy victory at all soul key fighting from a deficit that entire time making that one fateful choice at the end deciding to make those extra seven eight guardians there rather than transition into a full-on defiler push that was a wild one guys and i certainly enjoyed it but we're on to our next game with soul key eliminated who will protoss send out next will it be bisu or best royal is waiting to find out royal on a true rampage here gonna be heading out against bisu next Apocalypse is our map, and I'm a little surprised that they didn't send out Best here. feel like Best is amazing at cracking through Terran players on this map. It's pretty wide open. The third base is very easy to take, but even a three-base Terran with a pretty easy base, uh, easy third, uh, is not really a good match for Best. He will crush you when you least expect it those that ape strength man that gorilla strength of the zealot dragoon army will just run down from the high ground plateau and smash through you without a second thought and here bisu i wonder what he's gonna do bisu might bring out the arbiters here Especially considering the spawn position with Royal's main base facing towards Bisu. It can be a really strong play to go for Arbiters here. Recalls into the main are falling out of favor recently, but they can they do have their merits. They can win games. Depends on the Terran's response and the setup beforehand, of course. Uh, these days, I really do favor, uh, and I do rate 
the Arbiter recalls into, you know, third and fourth bases, I feel like they're a lot better. Going for the main uh, can be counterproductive in some cases, but it's so, so tempting, man. Especially on a map like this. Very, very tempting stuff to go for a big old Doom Drop, like 2009 style recall into the main base. Uh, and just keep on throwing those in until the Terran falls apart. But we'll see what Bisu decides to do here. Maybe he's going to play a newer style. He's not quite as proficient with the Reaver as someone like uh, Snow or even Best, I feel. But his Arbiter play is just about second to none. And his Terran or his Protoss versus Terran overall has just been leveling up over and over again as we've watched him more and more in 2023 and 2024. We'll see what he can do here. Sneaking out with his first Dragoon. Looking for some damage on these initial few Marines. Without the range, it's a little bit tough to fight, but he will shave off a bit of this HP. Vulture sneaking out on the map as well. He's going to need to keep this Dragoon back at home. Hopefully he's not too distracted here with the Dragoon uh, at the Terran Natural. Or with this SCV being chased right now to uh, see this Vulture coming in. But I think the Vulture might go for the run by. Dragoon is being pulled back. He's killing off all of the Marines. The Vulture runs into the main. Going to get a couple of kills. One kill so far. Second kill going to come down here in a moment. Ooh, a little bit of Miss Micro here from Royal. He actually accidentally attacks the Dragoon. And now the Dragoon getting in between the Vulture and the Probes. He's going to continue to run back and forth here. Try to block this. One more Probe looks like going to go down here. But another Dragon pops out. And the first manages to take down that Vulture. So some good damage here by Royal. But was it enough? He stopped some mining time. He killed about two probes there, I think. For the first Vulture, a lot of Terran players will argue it is not worth it. Um, that first Vulture is so important for laying down mines uh, in order to control. But getting inside and seeing all of the information in the main base, I think there's an argument to be made there that that might uh, make things actually worth it here. He sees that there's no... You know, super quick Reaver that it is range. Uh, he also saw that there was no, you know, DT play coming out of Bisu here. So he can eliminate a lot of the defensive structures that are usually necessary in the early games. He doesn't need, you know, a bunch of turrets. doesn't need a turret at the front. Um, he can get into his factories a little bit quicker. Uh, he can delay his eBay a little bit here. Things should be able to get slightly more um, streamlined here for Royal. And he's starting to push out a little bit. He wants to take uh, control over this high ground. Two tanks and a Vulture will be enough to make a little bit of space here. But Bisu is still standing, threatening from the high ground. A pickoff on any tanks that advance too close uh, to this army. And Reaver will pop out now. Here comes that shuttle. Let's see, the timing on the turrets is perfect here. That information paying off a little bit later here in the game. He knows he doesn't need scan or anything right now either. So he hasn't added on that armory. Streamlining the economy here really nicely and placing the, the mines. Some very good point, uh, points here for Royal. Reaver. Gonna be dropped soon. But the mine! Oh, great pick up there. Dodging the mine. Keeping the Reaver alive and on high HP. And now he's gonna be able to pick off this turret. Okay, great hold there on the turret. Only loses one SCV so far. And he got a good volley with the three tanks onto that Reaver. Dropping the Reaver again here. Another shot. Two more shots, in fact, onto that Reaver. Really good damage for Royal, uh, you know, hurting that Reaver quite badly, and Bisu will have to abandon this push. This harassment here, not going to do much more than what it's already done, which is only about two SCV kills, I think, overall. 
really really great hold there from royal and it all truly comes back to that earlier vulture run by and knowing exactly the timing and what's coming here from bisu able to prepare perfectly and now royal will start to move forward a little bit here with confidence preparing his tanks none of them have been lost thus far and bisu kind of exemplifying my earlier point which is that uh, he is a fantastic Protoss versus Terran player, but he might be lacking a little bit in his execution when it comes to Reavers. Not able to get the same sort of damage as Snow would uh, if he would just build his early Reaver. Like, not like the, the game that we saw from him today, unfortunately, not building that early Reaver. But if he would build that early Reaver, he would usually get quite a bit more damage and Royal sitting here as we saw in the game versus snow if you're not able to harass him and slow him down in the early game he is a scary force to reckon to reckon with in the late game he is incredibly good at just macroing out on three and four bases taking the game long and countering the mass shuttle style that's become so popular will bisu be opting for that style or will he show us some of that arbiter play that i've been talking about so much probe gonna make its way up here to the top right i think that royal has outmaneuvered him though he went back and forth a couple of times looking for that probe oh great pull away here though by bisu right as he sees the uh, vulture at the edge of his vision before it can lock on to the probe he pulls back and royal all that great maneuvering there which would have allowed him to take down that probe unfortunately will not result in a kill here and the fourth base will be on curve for bisu throwing that down around nine minute 30 here it looks like reavers at the front being forced back as the four goliaths advance two shotting a shuttle is possible with these four goliaths so you've got to be very very careful about how you advance with that shuttle losing the reavers here would be almost a death sentence if he doesn't get anything done with them and royal takes this army and just goes across the map and the reavers are gone the shuttle's gone you really don't have that much to deal with it oh a lot of damage there he did pick off one of the goliaths though so the two uh volleys here from royals goliaths not going to be enough to finish that off and he will back away now as he takes the third base probing attack there from royal checking to see if he could push out and take the take like a an easy push here oh good pick up saving from that mine Two Reavers here dropped in the main, but both shuttles are gone now. Let's see what kind of damage Bisu can do. He's gonna target, I think, the middle of these um the middle of these supply depots. No? Okay, not gonna do that. Instead, just gonna lose the Reavers here uh, while trying to deal some damage to these tanks. And that was not a lot of damage. It was um very minimal damage here on the side of Royal and Bisu just threw away two of his shuttles and two reavers for, what was that, a turret? Maybe a couple of SEVs as well? Not the greatest trade there. Bisu pushing down this ramp I think would be a mistake. Running into the mines. The mines actually connect pretty uh, inefficiently there on a lot of these zealots. And one zealot's going to be dropped right on top of the tanks, but the tank line is still holding strong. A lot of the zealots are disappearing, and so many of the dragoons are attacking that barracks. It actually dies before the fight ends. Another dragoon running in and just getting cleaned up. Dude, Royal is playing this out really well. Bisu kind of bumbling these attacks, fumbling the ball here a little bit as he tries to pick Royal apart. Royal going to put his army together slowly but surely. 121 supply to 126. It's looking eerily similar to the last game we saw with Royal versus Snow. Where Royal was keeping up in supply for the majority of the game. And when he exploded out on the map, well, very hard for Snow to contain him. I think the same will be true 
for Bisu here. He doesn't have an option to set up another rally point somewhere on the map. He hasn't taken the center right. That uh, extra main base location would be the only real feasible location to build additional gateways, but he just hasn't expanded down that direction. He's got some bases going up over here. The fifth base is going to come out from Bisu now, but he just doesn't have a spot to start rallying from. He doesn't have another location for gateways, so as long as Royal pushes out, and contains the the normal natural. If he manages to take the plateau just outside of Bisu's natural, that high ground area, it's going to get really, really hard for Bisu very quickly. Storms here in the main base dealing a lot of damage. Picking off quite a few SCVs, but he reserves uh, a second storm here. He's going to look for more damage in the natural. Let's see if he can get that damage now. Baiting with the Zealot. Throws down the storm. Gets a couple of SCVs here and keeps the shuttle alive critically. But not dealing too much damage on those uh, worker lines there. Royal able to pull everything back in time. Bisu now taking the natural of the bottom right. And as he takes this base, it's really incumbent upon Royal to start to do something about it. Sitting at 160 supply to 195, Bisu has really blown ahead here. He's just so far uh, along with his mineral income and his production that Royal is you know, barely able to hold on. But another great storm comes down here. Another nine kills on these SCVs. The harassment's coming out from Royal as well, but... Overall, going a little bit better for Bisu. Maxed out now with a lot of Zealots. This is the moment when I think Best would actually shove down the ramp and try to kill on, on three bases here. But I think Bisu is going to be a little bit more cautious here. He's going to sit back and wait for Royal to try and come out on the map instead and fight him when the army is out of position. I think that's the better choice. But how long will it be until that happens? Royal is going to sit and wait, I think, until he's almost maxed out before taking any sort of fight. Moving forward here to the high ground. I don't like that Bizu didn't have his uh, army on, on the high ground here, kind of waiting for Royal to actually slow him down. And as a result, a lot of mines are now present in the mi in the middle of the map, and that's really slowing down Bisu if he wants to aggress here onto Royal. He needs to make some moves. He needs to clear some mines. He needs to move into position. Meanwhile, Royal setting up a fourth base here. Stargate on the way. Are we going to go into Arbiter? No. Looks like Siren is core spinning. Likely to be a carrier transition here for the late game from Bisu. Army's moving around this bottom side here. Royal being really cautious about how he takes this fourth base and really taking his time getting set up. I would like to see, like, if you're going to transition into carriers, throw down four stargates here oh the scan comes down so dirty three stargates on the way right now he knows that the carrier transition is coming so roll can take appropriate measures this is the right time to get the scan as well really the perfect time to find out about this carrier transition is right as the carriers are starting uh, and we're not even quite there yet so Having that information even beforehand, knowing that that's potentially the way this is going to go, uh, he can start to make the plans here and take this fifth base a little bit ahead of schedule. He's going to start to spread over here, take this fifth, and gear up uh, for a massive push to try and end Bisu right before he gets to that critical mass of carriers. Dropping on high ground here, throwing down a few storms. Royal, though, holding a good position there on the left-hand side. Looks like he's not going to wait to take that next base. Instead, gunning down the shuttle here in the middle and sieging up his tanks. He's taking more of the central position. 
Sniping down observers here as well. And moving forward with this massive army. Is Bisu making carriers right now? He's making five carriers at the same time. That That's what I'm talking about. EMP goes down on that Templar. Bisu in full retreat here. He's just going to try and slow down this army as much as possible while waiting for his carrier transition. Will it be enough right now? He's got so much money in the bank. Even if he loses both the third base and the natural right now, I think he's going to be okay when it comes to uh, trading those bases. He's even going to try and push down here. Can he actually break into the fourth base of Royal? If he shuts down the fourth base while the carrier transition is happening, that would be the absolute best case scenario here for Bisu. He does need to stop this tank vulture army, though, from making its way into the main, however. If he gets into the main and starts attacking these stargates before the carriers really start to get up in number, that could be a way that Bisu uh, quickly loses this game. Starting to push into the main base right now. He's getting into a good spot. There's not a lot of army here for Bisu. He's pumping out DTs right now, but... He hasn't been able to actually get rid of these. Oh, wait. The vessel just went down. I was about to say he was, wasn't able to kill the vessel, but there's the vessel gone. Uh, DTs are going to start to deal more damage now. Zealots are popping out and just getting minced here. But five carriers are on the field. Five more are on the way. Royal was shut down at that bottom right-hand corner. He was uh, pushed off of his fourth base. He's going to try and take a fifth right now, but he's not going to push in on top of the Stargates. He's going to back away, start to rotate here. As he takes his fifth base and saturates that, Royal is going to try to push to another location. He's trying to push over here towards the top right, but Bisu is just about ready with these carriers, man. Five carriers is still strong. Uh, 10 will be out shortly. 5 here. Ready to fight. The interceptors are in pretty high number. We don't have uh, too many upgrades on this, but I am assuming we've got at least plus 1 attack. And we should have plus 1 armor here coming soon. We've also got that plasma shields upgrade uh, for the carriers, which does help out a little bit. Army moving down here towards the bottom right. He's going to start to break this natural. Very good. Storm's going to come out and slow this down. Killing off some of these tanks, injuring others. Gary is going to come forward here and at least defend the upgrades here, as well as the Stargates, although most of the gateways have been picked off. He's at least going to save those critical buildings. Being some free kills on these tanks and Goliaths. Quickly spreading out now. Royal's going to try to kill as many bases as he possibly can before the carriers are brought to bear. Remember, all we need once we've got 10 carriers is just enough money to build interceptors. That is really the bare minimum. Just enough income to build interceptors that's what we're looking for he's coming across he's gonna start to hit with these carriers Ooh, the shutdown here in the center left is huge stopping the income for royal in this base because he is just about mined out on three bases and dts are getting some real damage going here over at this uh you know command center down in the bottom right he's, can he save this nexus wait the nexus might actually be saved and that is huge. Bisu keeps that alive. That is a huge part of his mineral income right now. And that's going to keep him in the interceptors here. Looks like one of the two uh, cybernetic cores went down. But I think Bisu can hold this here. Ten carriers with plus two attack, plus one armor. Looking very, very strong. As long as he keeps building Templar down there in the bottom right-hand corner, he should be able to... Keep that base alive with just Templar and Carrier taking off a CC here. He could go for the CC over here as well. Just gun that down immediately with 10 Carriers and plus 2 attack. This will fall so incredibly fast. You won't even believe it. Look at all the SCVs trying to repair. Can he actually kill it? No. He backs away. He stops attacking that base. And meanwhile, Royal is attacking the top right. This is one of the very few last remaining bases for Bisu, and if this base goes down, he'll be relegated to just this one over here. 
a very small economy indeed for him right now. DTs are going to come forward, try to pick off as many tanks and Goliaths as they can. And the carriers are going to try to rotate over to try and save that base. But look at this. The Goliaths making a wall here, preventing the carriers from heading north. He's stopping everything from coming up here. He's stopping the, the critical save on that Nexus and all the probes have died. He can back away from this position now. He's relegated Bisu to one mining base. He himself, though, nearly on the same. He's got that one base in the center left. And down at the 6 o'clock, the minerals are really running low right now. But he's 72 supply ahead of Bisu right now. Bisu can't make anything because he is supply blocked here. DT's being sent out. But carriers getting such great uh, trades here overall, killing off tons and tons of goliaths and barely taking any damage to their hull. Just growing in number here now at 11, 11 carriers. It's hard to lose with 11 carriers, but we might see Royal pull out a win here. Coming once again down towards... That 6 o'clock. Looks like he's going to kill this CC. I think the CC goes down for sure here. This time. Does it not? No target on that CC. Instead, he's going to go for the gas geyser, funnily enough. Yeah, the gas is going to be the limiting factor here for Royal. He needs to continue to build uh, lots and lots of Goliaths. So, picking that off is kind of big. Meanwhile, Royal shuts down any further upgrades here. And... On just one base economy, can Bisu still make enough carrier or make enough interceptors to fight? He loses a carrier down to 10 carriers here. He's gonna rotate, I guess, over towards the top center, but he can't really defend both at the same time. He can't really defend bottom right, which is his mining, and his main base at the same time. He also can't really uh defend bottom right and attack Royal, who has taken center left. It's so far away to get over there and deal damage to that base would mean giving up the base down here in the bottom right. And Bisu just can't allow that to happen. He has to go uh, around the map and do some sort of sneaky drop play over here at the center left if he wants to deal damage to that. Meanwhile, he's going to go down here to the 6 o'clock, cut off this base. He's going for a drop into the center left as well. That drop is going to come through here in a moment, I think. Carriers pick off the CC. And DTs are defending over here at the bottom right. Royal, has he lost the script here? Is he losing control right now? He's not scanning for the DTs. Finally, the scan, I think, just came down. And he kills the DTs. But he's got to break through here. This is so many carriers. Just target the tanks. He is targeting down the tanks. Making sure that they can't easily just gun down the, the uh, cannons here. As long as he does that, uh, the... I don't think that he can actually dive on top of this. Oh, DT's over here, killing off so many SCVs. Dude, I think that Bisu might actually do this, as crazy as it sounds. However, look at the interceptor count running out. If he had uh, full interceptors here, I think he could absolutely do it. But as the interceptors die, the, the base being killed over there at the center left, all the damage by those DT's is not really going to matter if he can't hold this base. DT here in the middle of the fray, dealing a lot of damage. There's the scan finally coming out and dealing with that dt is killing every single scv here the the scvs are actually going to try to make a citizen's arrest but arresting an invisible man how can it be done oh my god the interceptor count is gone even with 10 carriers bisu not able to build enough interceptors to keep that ball rolling he taps out royal takes that game away Really impressive stuff by this Terran player. So, so good by him. Bisu, I mean, losing with 10 carriers, it never feels good. That force is should be nearly unbeatable, but Royal with the counterattacking, with the multiple attacks all over the map, shutting down bases constantly, uh, forcing Bisu into hard decisions. He did an excellent, excellent job despite taking huge, huge damage from the carriers, and of course the DTs. The DTs did so much in that game, but um, in the end, Royal able to roll him over. Bisu has to tap out, and only one Protoss player remains. Will Royal get the all kill this week, or will Saxory shut him down? We're about to find out.
Here it is, Royal's opportunity to seize the all kill prize this week. 400,000 won, approximately 300 US dollars is on the line. All he needs to do is take down this one last Zerg player. He's already taken out Queen and Sulky. Saxory should just be a cherry on the top here for Royal, but what can he bring out? What? are his team members coaching Saxory to do to take down Royal here. We're about to find out Saxory not building an early pool like his uh, team members here. Not fearing the eight racks right now. Royal hasn't been showing it all day in neither of the two previous games against the other Zerg players did he go for the eight racks. So Starting to catch on to the pattern here. Saxory going to go for a 12 pool, I imagine. A 12 hatch, excuse me. And get himself into a nice macro position. You don't see this as much anymore. This used to be the absolute standard. With Zerg players completely confident in their ability to shut down any early Terran aggression, but the proficiency of Terran with the eight ranks recently and how powerful it's become has relegated the 12 hatch to kind of a like a meta play, right? You have to kind of feel out your opponent and, and figure out that they're not going to eight racks before you can can go for this with any sort of confidence, I feel. Saxory now throwing this down. He's going to send the drone scout across and see that he was right in his choice. That the eight racks is not going to be coming here. That Royal is going to stick to the script. He's going to stick to his guns here. And take a wall in with a quick command center. Second supply depot going to be coming out here. Forming that complete wall at the front. Zergling tight. So... Had there been, you know, an early pool here from Saxory, the wall-in would have been such that it would have been in a very, very rough position. As it stands, he should be good here. I think he's going to be trapped, unfortunately, with that drone. I don't think he can get out of here. Um, yeah, it's completely stuck. This is a Ling-tight wall. So it's certainly a drone-tight wall. That one drone will be the sacrifice here. But Saxory got some good information. He knows exactly what's coming. He has the right build. He has a reasonable position and a fighting chance here. Royal throwing down the second uh, barracks. Likely going to see a two racks pressure here out of him. Just nice standard stuff. Will we see 2.5 hatch out of Saxory? It's sort of looking that way. We'll see if he can afford it. With these Marines moving out on the map, he may be forced to build a few uh, pairs of Lings right now. He did delay the Lings for quite a long time, only now producing a pair of Lings. So he's been optimizing his build as much as possible thus far. Marines are going to be spotted here by the Overlord over the body of water, that little lake there, lake area. SCV spots more links have been produced. Six links have been produced, but he's going to, you know, maintain with the 2.5 hatch here. Sending that out. Gets his spire going as well. Will continue the drone production now and get himself into a nice macro build. And I'm looking forward to this one. We haven't had... Uh, we've had a lot of scrappy games so far, which I do, in fact, like. I really enjoy a lot of these scrappy fighting games, but we're going to get into a bit of a, a more of a macro game here, I think, with Saxory versus Royal. It is on Dark Origin, so we'll probably see if we get a third base from Saxory and this game starts to drag out a little bit. No serious damage comes out on either side, then we'll probably end up seeing... Uh, him going into a Hydralis Defiler style of play. Being forced to throw down double sunken colony here. There's not really a choice in the matter. As Royal starts to push across the map with this two racks pressure. Forcing out those two sunken colonies is just par for the course here. And Saxory trying to follow these marines. 
keep tabs on them and see what, how much progress they've made here is slowly bleeding lings he was at six now he's at two not a lot of assistance for these sunken colonies if there was a bust coming but Rolla doesn't seem very interested in making that happen here instead he's just going to reinforce bring his army back and start to set out turrets now as the seven eight mutilus are incremented out now by saxory can't fully afford to you know, pump nine mutas here after building those two sunkins but he is going to have a relatively strong force here of mutas coming across the map in just a moment we'll see how prepared royal is so far his mutilus preparation and defense has been spot on but everybody makes mistakes regardless of how well the games have been going today Royal may end up getting pulled apart here by Saxory. This is a really great play by Saxory, actually. Excellent positioning there, use, utilizing the bridges and the Marines being split apart a little bit to actually pick off quite a lot. He's going to get a few more Marines and another Medic. Really great job by him so far. Not losing a single Mutalisk and just a couple of Lings being sacrificed to get that damage. A big round of drone pop, drones pop out. He's sitting here on just six mutas. But he's going to be feeling very nice about his spot. With that many drones being pumped out, he's going to be able to really start to macro up here and transition while taking a third base. And the fact that his mutas are kind of regaining HP is just kind of a bonus right now. Soon they'll be reinforced. And that full 11 stack will be coming together in just a moment single marine being sent to the top right for royal he wants to find out if there's a third base and where it might be but saxory takes this base the standard location here just outside of his natural we'll start the harassment now good repair there from royal but three shotting that turret Saxory gonna start to open up the position here in the natural. He does need to still dog these Marines, though. He can't just let them head across the map here. With the, the high number that they're in right now, and no real transition here just yet. We have to wait for these lurkers to come out before we can fully push across. And one thing, or fully commit here with the Midas, and one thing we have to keep in mind is there's a lot of bridges here. So many Zerg players will fall. Uh, to a, a good Terran player with excellent marine control uh, at the bridges. It's hard to push across the bridges, but there are three of them. So it's not easy to spread your lurkers and control all three bridges plus the high ground above your third base. Uh, if there's like some good splitting and some good control by the Terran, things can get really messy during that transition period as you're bringing out lurkers for the first time. Good job continuing to harass this small marine force, but one marine moving around the side here is going to force a few mutilists back to deal with that armor is done for saxaria that's a little bit surprising i wasn't expecting armor evolution chamber on the way this is a standard transition from him will he have lurkers in time though the marines are moving across the map we do not have lurkers right now and the mutas are being slow at returning back home the marines are being allowed to walk across the map kind of for free here and it's just pure hydra he needs lurkers right here right now Dude, these Marines are going to get so much damage done. They're diving on top of the Lurkers. They're uh, threatening to kill them as the eggs pop out. Okay, he's going after the Medics. One Medic, two Medic. Can he get a third Medic? He does. Three Medics go down. Four Medics go down. Five Medics go down. Dude, he's got one Medic left. He's going to dive on top of this right as the Lurkers pop. And I think he's actually going to hold this. This is really, really close stuff. But great pickoffs here uh, from the back of the army. How did he clean that? Holy crap. Dude, that was an amazing cleanup by Saxory. Really, really good stuff. Royal just got pulled apart there bit by bit. Looking like he was in a really good spot. He got a little bit overconfident, it seems. Diving on top of the Lurker eggs. He thought he'd kind of won, I think. Uh, by getting across the map at that moment. But Saxory shows him, absolutely not. You are going to have to hold 
These mutas still in, diving in with a whole bunch of links. He's going to clear out all the marines now. Diving forward with lurkers too, right here into the natural. They're going to get a couple of volleys off, but one of them will be sniped. One lurker much less strong than, you know, two or three. So, you know, what can this lurker actually do? It should just be... Uh, the, the Marines coming down, spreading and splitting and killing off that one Lurker, but how much damage can he do right now? He's maybe going to pick off uh, the remainder of these Marines. The Lings are going to start to kill the turrets now. Lings killing the turrets. There's an Irradiate to get rid of that one Lurker. The Marines coming down here should be able to clear out the Lings, and Royal will eventually be able to stabilize here. Did Saxory go a little bit too far? He's losing the last few... Uh, mutas that he has right now, but he did a lot of damage here. He killed so many Marines. Got rid of a ton of those. Now he's coming in. He's looking for a snipe on the science vessel here. This is such great heads up play from Saxory, bringing those uh, Scourge to the front. Even during all of this chaos, he's trying to build a bunker here in the front just to solidify this position, but. Dude, he is going to get stuck behind his supply de depots here in a moment. If he doesn't do something fast and he loses the science vessel, that is a huge pickoff here. That's exactly what Saxory was looking for. And he's going to get these supply depots at the front. He's not letting up. He's just going to keep pushing forward here. Saxory smells blood in the water. He loses both of his... Wait, no, that one survives. Oh my god, 2 HP on that. That lurker was getting focused for so long, but... Royal pulled back just a moment too soon, and now Lurkers are getting here into the SCV line. He's going to have to just pull everything back or just tap out of this game. All the SCVs are going to make a run for it. Marines here on the high ground should be able to hold things back. He'll have to lift and run the CC away. Some more irradiates do come down. He's going to spread and split. Kill this last Marine, uh, Lurker, excuse me. Marine's going to push out finally, but a Defiler is here. He's got to get out and irradiate that Defiler ASAP. He sees it. He sees it. This is really, really big. Royal is going to go over and irradiate that Defiler and start to push everything back. Okay, he doesn't. He's actually just going to sit here. Um, waiting for any sort of counterattack, making sure that he's uh, got all of his hotkeys ready, uh, that he has, uh, you know, more uh, reinforcements coming out here. Saxory going to sit on his back foot uh, with Dark Swarm and Lurker. He shouldn't be broken. And he's done a lot of damage here, but behind all of this, what does he have? Well, he's transitioning into a Defiler Hydro game. I don't know if he's got... Uh, Hydra upgrades here. I don't know where he's at with that. Uh, if he's going to be transitioning fully into that soon. But here's Royal starting to put that pressure on on all the bridges. He's going to go for a lotto ship here. Try to spin to win. Let's see what he can get done with that lotto ship. Maybe he can get into the main. Maybe he can surprise Saxory here and get things out of control right now. This fire in the main. Do we have Scourge ready for a drop to come through? Dark Swarm here on the left-hand side. Spotted. The dropship has been spotted. Does Saxory see it? Or is he too busy here paying attention to the front, to this left-hand side, to, to know about it? The Firebats are making their way in here. The dropship makes its way into the natural. He just noticed it now. Oh, man. Royal is actually pulling things back together here. He's going to utilize the Dark Swarm right now to actually kill all the Hydras. Oh, my God. So much damage here. Uh, with these marines under the dark swarm utilizing it against the zerg player it looks like a lot of these were actually uh plagued so i think the marines and medics will have to run from this position now and the drop will eventually be clean but i think this damage right here that royals managed to do could start to really snowball as time goes on all that saxory needs though is a couple of really good plagues and a strong defense here, although nothing over at this third base right now. It's just eggs and one Hydra popping out. A few overlords floating overhead is not going to help out. Defiler coming down here. Can he get a great plague on all this army? Dark Swarm goes down instead. Dude, you don't need Dark Swarm here. Not against this many fire bats and marines already underneath that Dark Swarm. Some lurkers coming forward, but vessels make their way to the front. Play are uh, irradiating everything. No plague for the army. Unfortunately, here for Saxory as he tries to 
stabilize and get some mining going back at that third base. This is getting really crazy. Looks like he's not mining fully on that second gas, which could become a massive issue here going forward. If you don't have three drones on that third uh, on one of these gases, you can fall so far behind so quickly. You need all of that income. You cannot afford to throw any of that away. A uh, dropship coming in here. Looks like he's going to react just fine this time. Uh, with Ling, some mutas coming up as well. I think this is going to get completely cleaned up, and it does. Dark Swarm and Lurker here will hang on to this position. Dude, Saxory is just barely keeping in this game right now. After all the damage that went down in Royals Natural and how close he was to falling apart, it's hard to believe that he's managed to swing the pressures so far back onto Saxory. But the, such is the uh, status of Zerg versus Terran, man. It feels so strong, whatever the opponent is doing, right up until it stops being strong. And then all of a sudden... Uh, you've got so much momentum. The, the momentum plays in this matchup are insane. Big plague on a lot of these units. Can you get a second one? There's another great plague there. Hydras and Lurkers starting to move forward. But Royal is setting up his third base. Getting into position here. Setting out some... Uh, factories as well it's time to transition into masses of tanks to back up this very strong marine vessel force marine firebat vessel force a couple of dropships moving around the bottom side saxory is playing it really close right now not moving too far away from his uh, bases but pretty soon he's going to extend out here more towards the middle of the map and at that moment royal will be coming in with dropships to try and puncture either the third here or that main base um, it'll be up to saxory to react to that appropriately lurkers are here they see the drop coming in he burrows but it's actually headed up for the main base just a couple of hydras already some mutas are going to come in as well to try and assist the fire bats won't stand much chance against them but the marines here in the mix should be able to uh, fight back against them hydras are going to be brought forward and he may be able to save this base. Spawning pool was being targeted, but it looks like the spawning pool will be saved now. Lings make their way on to top of everything, and defilers are not present, but lurkers are able to hold off on these bridges. He's hanging on everywhere. Saxory playing a great scrappy game right now. And another command center going to come up. Royal going to continue to expand and grow while Saxory is stagnating a little bit here on third, on, on three bases, excuse me. However, this three base style, this three base Zerg is stronger than any other. The Defiler Hydra style gives you so much uh, momentum and uh, trading here. The the econ the the economy the economics of this is just so good. Oh, great plague there! This is gonna rip apart these marines. Absolutely fantastic plague. This is gonna allow Saxory to continue to push forward here. Another defiler is present. Can he get one more great plague on a bunch of these marines? He should now. Great job. Another one, and he should now be able to take an, a fourth base. Really important that he does so soon because we're reaching that 20 minute mark about the time when the gas geysers start to run out here for the zerg player really really important that he starts to snag more bases out here on the map with this momentum that he's gotten from all these plagues it'll be very hard for radiates to come down without losing masses of vessels here so uh, vessels are coming forward he's starting to try and snipe those down most of them are plagued right now. Another drop coming in. Saxory with the momentum he had. Trying to push forward. But another drop is going to steal that momentum away from him once again. Attack over here on the left hand side. The lurkers are not burrowed. Such a painful moment for Saxory. Had those lurkers been burrowed, he probably could have easily held. But he's going to end up losing a whole bunch of economy over here. A whole bunch of drones are going to end up going down. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map... 
Uh, the, the lurkers are kind of trying to run back here. He's trying to hold a position, uh, but he's losing so much on his side of the, of the map. Hatcheries are falling. Saxory is breaking apart here at the 11th hour. Royal able to break through with this army here on the left-hand side. Hydras and Lings are going to try to come up and stop this army from killing that last hatchery at the third. Will he be able to do it? It's so close. 300 HP left on that. Looks like he will be able to focus that down. 250 now remains. He does bring up some lurkers to deal with it. And he keeps this base alive. Oh my god, guys. This is craziness. But I think that Royal will eventually be able to run this man over. Saxory has put up a hell of a fight here. But with that third base being absolutely ravaged. And drones going down en masse. I think that he's managed to make it happen. There's tanks in high enough numbers to hold off any counter. And the drop coming through. One last final time. GG is called. Saxory. Taken down. He gets the clapper. Royal. With his all kill prize. 300 bones in the pocket here. US dollars. Cold hard cash. Going to him. That is sweet. For the Terran squad. They've already eliminated Zerg. And they may be going out first here. The last player standing in their way. Best. A very big mogul. A very big hill to climb here. But Royal has that momentum. Can he get over best here? Let's find out. Okay, Royal with four kills now. Going up against best here. Can best be the hurdle? that trips Royal and brings us to a final game. Light is waiting in the wings, and here we are on Retro. It's a great map for Protoss, in my opinion. We'll see if Best can bring this to a win, and Royal here with the momentum behind him, looking for that final kill, but he's already earned his all-kill prize. I don't think he's too worried about taking this win here. He's going to be playing with no pressure whatsoever. He's done his part for the Terran race this week of KCM. And he's going to be able to just relax, play out his game. All the pressure's on best to try and bring this one back. After a kind of lackluster performance for the Protoss this week. Of course, Snow got one kill. But other than that... It really hasn't been too much success for the Protoss race in what's been a very Protoss-dominated season of KCM. Best here. Going to be throwing down Gateway in the main base. Royal. Barracks on the high ground here. Both players going to scout each other first. Going to meet for a little kiss here on the ramp. Good job blocking here from Royal. Actually getting quite a bit of damage on this. Removing the shields. Even getting some moving shots going. Oh my gosh. Royal not going to let the probe go down the ramp. Holy. This is some great micro out of Royal. He is on fire right now. Another couple hits. It's a zero range on this uh, SCV, man. Bringing it down to 4 HP. He was only one shot away from losing that probe, and now he needs two hits because of the regeneration of the shields. One goes down. Two more here as more regeneration comes through. I can't believe how well Royal is doing with this SCV. He is shutting this uh, probe down so damn well. And finally, that probe is going to make its way across, but it's super low on that HP, and the Marine will be out here in a second. He's got to be very careful not to lose that. Oh, he's not even able to block with the probe here on the ramp, and the SCV will make its way into the main. Got to be careful with that probe. He will pull it back right away. Marine not out in time to stop the probe from seeing CC anyway. But not really too much that Best can do about the CC here. He's going to throw down a Nexus of his own. But gasless fast expand from Royal. He's going to be feeling very good about his position here. As the 
bunker finishing up now and he should be getting into his factory here in just a moment's time looking really really good now best he's not out of this by any stretch of the imagination he's got a robo on the way he does not have range coming here he's gonna go for a very fast reaver try to get over and deal some significant damage to royal before he can really get his feet underneath him in this game scv is coming across the map here he may be able to get in and scout this there is a probe sitting waiting on the high ground waiting on the ramp here hoping to block any sort of scv scout but using up quite a bit of mining time in order to make this happen and royal's already shown that he's perfectly capable of forcing back a probe here on the ramp with some great micro from the scv actually scv heading all the way across the map i'm a little bit um confused about that i thought that he knew he knows for sure right that uh this is over here he definitely got in with that probe or with that scv robotic support bay on the way scv i guess was just taking the long way hoping to avoid a dragoon but this SCV probably going to be able to sneak by here. Dragoon not reacting. Okay, there it is. He gets the reaction. Very nice stuff there from Best. But Roll's got to be getting a little bit uh, suspicious here. Seeing the Dragoon out in the front of his natural. Not hitting the bunker right now. Clearly, there's no range on this. And so there must be something else coming. Where was that gas going if not into range here? It must have been going into either a DT play or some sort of very fast reaver. There's the range starting now, but it's incredibly late. Royal here. Popping out a couple of tanks. He does not have turrets set up just yet, but he should have them on the way here shortly. Getting prepared for that reaver to come out. He's going to start to push away this dragoon. Getting a little damage onto that is nice, but... Best will back away in time with 94 HP left on that, so not taking too much important damage critically on the... Just, just losing the shields there, not losing the actual hit points, and here comes that shuttle. Three tanks are available. Turrets are finishing up now. Here comes the shuttle into the main. We're not getting it on screen. No, that's not the shuttle. Okay, never mind. I thought that was the shuttle. Just an observer making its way into the main. I'm surprised that he went for observer. If you're going to skip your range for this long, why would you waste any time building an observer here? Why not just go directly into shuttle and reaver? There must be some nuance of Protoss that I'm missing there, but he goes for the observer first, sees everything that's going on in Royal Space, and he knows that he can't really get in here. Royal has battened down the hatches with plenty of turrets. Speed is done now. Oh my goodness, the perfect gap here between these two turrets. He's going to find his way into the back of the natural now. Taking one big shot on these SCVs. Another one could come down here. Nope, just going to abandon ship after killing off like three, four SCVs in the natural. He's going to head back out again. And leave Royal in peace. Third base is coming up here from Bess. I'm surprised he didn't want to stay and kind of dance around in the main a little bit more. You know, try to force some SCVs to maybe run away or something like that. Second Reaver's going to pop out here. He's going to pick up that second Reaver and head back across the map. We still don't have a turret in the middle. So there's still that hole, which could be utilized here. Royal messing up slightly the turret positioning, I think. And he may pay for that dearly here. Reaver's going to be dropped now. Slow down this uh, factory timing, perhaps. Oh, a tank kill. We'll get the SCV as well on the backside. Backing away, slowing down the factories here. Things are starting to look pretty good for Best. I'm liking his spot right here. In this factory, maybe be able to force the cancel? Can he actually? Couple more hits. Going for a tank. Can he get it? One shot. Not quite able to make it happen. Gonna fly into the back here as the tanks get moved forward. 
It's a good move. I'm gonna eat one tank shot, but how much damage can he get with this scarab? Another tank shot goes down, but two two reavers here. He should be able to kill the tank. He does. Tank goes down there, flying back into the main. Can he get big hits on some of these SCVs? No, he flies straight on back out. Really great harassment here from Bess, keeping both Reavers alive and getting out with that shuttle. Quite a bit of damage going down onto Roll as well. So this has been a complete success, I would say, for Best. And Royal, this is the damage that we were talking about before. Against both Bisu and Snow. Royal didn't take that early damage or this early damage that's so critical to the Protoss getting ahead and overwhelming in the mid and late game with masses of gateway units. Let's see if Best can make it happen here because he is truly the best, the silverback gorilla of the Protoss race, the alpha male here who can run through any Terran player in any position, but in this position, it's more true than ever. He's certainly going to have that opportunity should he choose to try and get aggressive here. A 9 minute 50 on location CC from Royal. Pretty dangerous base to be taking right now. If Dragoons were sitting on top of that ramp, if the shuttle was placed over in that position, it would be very hard to take this base, but since Best doesn't have anything up here, Royal is going to quickly snag that base. Looks like Best thinking about taking center left right now. A sneaky spot to expand, considering the, the regular path of expansions on this map. However, Royal is going to find this. And with Royal finding this base, Best is going to be revealed. And this base is going to be a very big target for Royal. For any sort of harassment, taking the upper left will allow you to get more gateways as well. It's just, it's a worse base to have here as Best. Kind of all around, it's, it's a worse base to have. But he wanted to try and sneak it. He wanted to see if he could get away with taking that. Um, if he was able to get away with taking that and Royal was none the wiser, maybe he could have, uh, you know, tricked Royal into thinking he was just staying on three bases and building up a massive army, whereas he was actually going on to four uh, and taking this into a later game. But Royal has the setup here at the natural. It's not looking that strong, though. That is so many zealots. Uh, Best could absolutely break through here. You have to have perfect setup. Uh, as the Terran player, more mines are certainly necessary. Royal has backup army over here. Ooh, jumping into the main instead. He's going for the drop here. Going to try and deal as much damage as he can in the main base. Reavers going for big shots here. We've seen this before. Can he get the connections? Not quite as lucky as Snow. He's going to go after a lot of these... Uh, supply depots though trying to fight shoot into the middle of the supply depots could be really really strong meanwhile while the army is being sent to the back to deal with the reavers he's gonna try and bust the front royal not ready here any longer at the front of the uh natural is gonna get busted really really quick here a lot of kills on those two reavers and the combined attack here to the natural and the main is gonna break Royal wide open it seems even having some storms mixed in for this next part of the fight He should be able to cast those get rid of these uh, Tanks here. He's actually dragging mines with the Templar. That's not something you see every day But he does manage to clear that out. He will shut down this third base It was pretty crazy for Royal to think about trying to take that but he wanted to make his way back in this game Sometimes you have to get crazy if you want to uh, make a comeback against Protoss, but it doesn't seem like this was the play. Royal just doesn't have the units necessary to clear this out, and more Zealots are coming down here. A stream of Zealots are making their way towards this base right here, and just two tanks is not going to be enough. He's going to have to lift and bail out of this location. Storms? No, he targets that down. Storm gets denied here. 
Zealots coming down the ramp should get ripped apart by these uh, vultures here uh, at the bottom of the ramp. And more vultures making their way up here might be enough to clear this. Maybe Royal still stands a chance in this game. That did seem like a near killing blow from Best just moments ago, but maybe Royal can sustain Zealots dropping on top of the tanks over here and vultures are not high enough in number it looks like. More tanks are going to fall. Great surround there with these Zealots and even more vultures are going to go down, but it looks like Royal clears. He does clear. He does hold th the third. He lost some probes, or he lost some SCVs, excuse me. The probe number is still high. Four bases are up and running for best right now, but Royal does save his own life in this game. It was a very near thing, though. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to keep uh, fighting back against this, as best is not finished putting on the pressure right now he's gonna keep these shuttles coming putting on even more scv damage here could be devastating huge storms dealing so much damage to the mineral line another big storm gonna come down in this natural great storm there dealing so much damage to the already weakened scvs from the earlier drops royals economy getting eviscerated right now and there's no hope for a push out at this point in the game there's truly nothing that royal can do except sustain this damage and try to build up he's sitting at 100 supply to just 139 so it's still possible to hold on at this point he's gonna try at least to do some sort of drop a counter drop here maybe into the main but meanwhile best gonna shove here into the natural the three bases are too hard to hold at this point there's just too many units from best breaking in everywhere it's just pure zealot dragoon making its way up here onto the third base high ground best is taking multiple bases around the map including the base down in the bottom left during this attack it's templar here with 10 kills no storm left on him but not really needed right now as all of the scvs are going down simply to the dragoons and zealots that have been fielded by best right here best is cleaning out everything the mines being thrown down are not going to be enough gg is called and royal taps out we are going to get that final game, guys. I'm so happy to see it. Glad for Royal and happy he was able to take an all kill here. Definitely well deserved, but best too high of a mountain to climb. Even with the momentum here from Royal, it'll be all down to light to take him out in this final game. That's coming right up. Final game of the night here. Light versus best going to be on citadel and i wonder if this is the percent win the, the win percentage for terran on this map i wonder does light like this map the terran players like this map versus protoss i feel like it's a, a tough map in my mind i think this is more of a protoss favored map but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below roll definitely made it look doable in his match versus snow well maybe it's more of a terran map than i thought originally there are a lot of open areas and no high ground for the Terran to abuse. A very open main base as well. Yeah, I, I think that this is more of a Protoss map personally, but... Maybe you guys can change my mind on that. Maybe Light can change my mind on that here versus Best. And It's all come down to him, man. It's all on his shoulders here. Can he take Terran to a victory? in this week best doesn't want to let him have it he certainly played his heart out in that game versus royal last one able to succeed where both bisu and snow had failed it's got to be an amazing feeling here as best See what he can do against Light. Now bringing up his probe into the main. 
Let me go ahead and check out what's going on here for light and seeing that everything's quite normal. Just going to get to work on some of these SCVs. What kind of damage he can do and if he can force an extra SCV or two off the line to either repair or try to chase this probe, then that's going to be a success for him. Ooh, a manor pylon here in the mineral line. You don't often see it from Protoss uh, against Terran, but can be a good way of slowing things down. Usually this will be accompanied by a zealot, but I don't think we're seeing a zealot here. Might just be going straight into a dragoon off of this. Does cancel. And the reason why this is good is because it's blocking one of the mineral patches in the back. If you're not somebody who watches a lot of PvP, which is mostly where we see manor pylons, build the manor pylon to, to, to trap one SCV, and it also forces other uh, SCVs or workers to run around the back of the mineral patches to try and mine that mineral. Which, I mean, it's it's probably the worst m mining you've ever seen in your life. It's so slow. And it really limits the economy of your enemy for a little bit. It, it takes quite a bit of money, of course. It costs 100. And when you cancel, you only get 75% uh, percent of that money back. 75 minerals returned to you. But uh, people have worked it out. The pro players have worked it out. It is pretty worth it to slow down an SCV. Uh, mining in the main base. Definitely worth more than 25 minerals if you let that get nearly complete and then cancel. And so, with these little early advantages, chipping away here at light, will he find himself in a good position or will light find ways to chip back at best here? Will he get in with an earlier attack with the, the vultures or going for a really quick machine shop here, even machine shop before the first vulture. He's going to have a very quick upgrade. He might be able to place mines in a location that best may end up stepping onto with these early dragoons, but best being very, very cautious right now. He's just keeping his dragoons in a nice spread formation here at the front. He's got plenty of vision. He's not, you know, sitting out in front of the Terran natural or anything. He's ready to fall back if vultures come running in. You can block them from getting into the natural. Three vultures. Is this a speed? I think this is speed. He's not gone for mines here. I think we're going to see speed and an attempted run by by light. This could go really, really well, or it could go really, really poorly. Let's see what happens. Speed is going to come into play here he's gonna go around the bottom of the map and try to slip by he lost one vulture already at the front and that's gonna maybe make best feel a little bit more safe probes being pulled here to the ramp two probes go down but a great pull here from best that's about as good as you could possibly ask for he's even gonna shut down the vultures that were trying to run by while this vulture hangs around the backside trying to get a couple more probes. Probe gets the kill on the vulture. Not something you see every day, but there it is. Really perfect shutdown here by Best. That's about as perfect as it could possibly get. In that situation, Best handles everything marvelously here. And now we'll be taking his third base. Yeah, that can go so wrong. It's silly how much damage can get done uh, by an attack like that from a skilled Terran player. Even a an unskilled Terran player. If they just right-click into your base and you don't pull your probes in time or you don't bring your Dragoons back in time or your Dragoons are out of position, you can end up losing an entire mineral line in a matter of seconds. And there's nothing the Dragoons can do about it. Um, if they're out of position, they just have to run up and start shooting and the the targeting on the vultures as long as it's good can kill nearly every probe in a mineral line so best staving off a massive amount of damage there by just handling that properly and having the dragons in position a starport out here on the map light is really getting tricky here i know he's very well known for 
being uh, extremely strong with the dropships and relying on them quite heavily. But you don't often see him putting you know, proxied starports around the map. That, he's much more of a standard player than that. But this is kind of a wa wild and wacky play here, throwing a starport out. He's kind of expecting to be scouted here. He's expecting that a observer will make its way into the main and see everything and see that there's no starport and that Best will then let his guard down and allow these vultures to get lifted up and dropped into the main uh, without too many dragoons there to stop them now quite a few probes go down here at the third some pretty good damage there at least by light some more vultures gonna come out here he needs to save these actually though because they are gonna be for that drop uh, best thinking about taking a fourth he's gonna start to spread himself quite thin here he really doesn't have much at that third base to defend um, no point in throwing down a uh, oh my gosh, a hidden base over here? Light is getting wild right now. I love it. This is way off a tempo from Light. This is this is completely out of his character going for these type of plays, but uh, that's probably why it's going to end up working here. Dropship is coming around towards the main base. Best is spreading out everywhere, killing off mines and thinking about taking a fourth right now. So he's really not going to have much to defend his third and his main base at the same time. Here comes those two vultures here into the main. A good pylon and he blocks here. Really, really nicely done. Dude, those buildings are so clutch. Really well done, but oh... Best, I mean, he's going to lose some probes no matter what somewhere. Light is just so quick and so relentless with this vulture attack. With these vulture attacks, he is going to get some damage, but not nearly what he was looking for here. That drop was supposed to deal a lot of damage in the main base. However, Best, with good positioning on his units, once again setting up a great wall as well shutting all of that down this is a problem though light over here at the se uh, way over the left hand side of the map that's not a base that best is likely to scout you can see it's a black spot on his map right now it means he's never been over there and he's not likely to head over there anytime soon he's going to be Watching for Light to take a third base and waiting for him to overextend. However, Light is just going to sit here and build SCVs at his third command center and slowly build up. Bess is going to think that he's just taking a really long time to take his third. But in reality, that third base is already done and mining. And Light is going to be reaping the benefits of that while slowly moving forward to take his quote-unquote third base, which is actually his fourth. With Best really not understanding how far behind the curve he is. Fourth base still yet to be thrown down here from Best. He's gearing up for a potential two-base attack out of light and... Trying to clear out mines and vultures wherever he can in the meantime. Three vultures going to slip by here over towards the main base. One cannon here. Multiple probes going down. Four or five probes falling here in the main. Pretty decent hold though. Once again. I mean, Bess has done a great job this game, guys. He's done a really great job holding on everywhere. Not taking too much damage to all the vultures that have been thrown out. This is looking like a... This is looking like a sharp game or something. If you covered up the name and asked me who was playing, I would have said someone like Sharp. The way that he's moving his vultures around and being so proactive with them, trying to pick off probes the entire time and, you know, hitting multiple counterattacks at the same time while sneaking a base in the center and left. This is this is not the light that we're used to. This is some interesting uh, adaptations and changes that Light has made here recently, or as he's trying to make in this game at least. Slowly pushing out here. Look at this. 
Best is certain that Light does not have a third base right now. He's going to find the Starport. He's going to maneuver around there to actually kill that now. Starport should be going down here. But he's going to be feeling quite happy that Light is being slowed down so much. It's 12 minutes in. It's 12 minutes. And Light hasn't taken a third. Or at least Best... That's what Best thinks. So Best feels like he's in a good spot. Little does he know, though. Light is very happy about this position. He's going to slowly move forward here. Try to pick off this Observer. Shove back the Reavers here as best he can. Mine's not going to be able to connect on that. The Reavers will be uh, pushed back for now. A fourth base is going to have to come down here. Best looking to delay that as long as possible. Setting up more Reavers over here at the fourth location. And Best, I mean, the wool has been completely pulled over his eyes here. He has no idea, of course, about this center left. Otherwise, he would have killed it for sure. Um, but, I mean, he's just thinking, he's sitting here thinking, I've done a great job. Look at how long it's been uh, before Light could take his third. It's 13 minutes. He just has no idea here. Look at how many SCVs have been made. This is a one SCV job here. He, he made the CC, and then that CC made every single SCV you see over there at that third. Best starting to push up here. He's going to be shocked at how many units are available right now for light. That's so many tanks. You cannot break that. Oh my goodness. He lost the shuttle as well. Look at how many tanks are available right now. This is way too many. I think light might start, or I think best might start getting suspicious. Like, is that really possible? <laughs> Could you actually have that many? tanks at this point on two bases that is kind of wild you just got your third base online and you've already got such a supply of tanks look at the supply right now guys 180 as lights just now claims the lead best starting to run around the map he's i i think the wheels are spinning here for best right now he's like are we sure that he doesn't have another base around the map i know i checked down here but I gotta go, go go check again down in the bottom left. Maybe I need to take another base as well. Um, army starting to move forward here. Light taking the opportunity of best army being down in the bottom left to quickly move forward and take this mineral only. Dude, so many tanks. He's ahead. 20 supply right now. Light is so far ahead here. It's all due to this hidden base. Bez is going to be kicking himself for never checking that location and thinking that Bez, or that, that Light would never do something like that. I think that was the mentality here from Bez, but Light will absolutely do whatever it takes to win a game. That's a, the mark of a strong, robust StarCraft player. You do what it takes to get the win. We try not to stick to our guns. We don't play the same game every single time. We have to mix things in like this to keep our opponents guessing. Here comes those vultures running up. Looks like we've got Storm now. A lot of vultures went down, or a lot of zealots went down though during that fight. And still, Best has no idea about this base. Okay, running forward, trying to snipe the, the shuttle, but Storm's answer. And Best is being bore down on over here at his natural. He sees quite a few tanks are on the defense over at the third. This might be the opportunity that Best needs to try and uh, break this. Oh, he loses his shuttle. I think there was about three Templar in that as it goes down. He's going to come forward here, try to break this. That's so many tanks, though. A lot of zealots coming up here. Not that many vultures are left. That is a lot of zealots. He's going to jump on top of this. The uh, tanks are mostly targeting the zealots. Okay, he's going to target on the dragoons now. So cleaning a lot of this up. A lot of the army here from Best actually not moving forward. Unfortunate there. And Light is just about ready to clear this game out. He's so close to ending this one. A uh, way out of character play from him. But that's what makes it so genius. The hidden base claiming best life here. GG. Bringing light to the victory.
Really, really great play from him. Mixing in some sneaky plays like proxy starport, early vulture speed, and going for that proxy location, that hidden base location. Really good, intelligent stuff from Light. Love to see it. And it's great to see a Terran victory here in week number seven. Hey, that's it. We're done for this week of the KCM. Hope you enjoyed the solo cast here. Um, looking at the score screen, I can see that there is a chance, an opportunity for a tie, although we've never had one before. If Terran manages to take first place next week and Protoss gets in third, we might have a tie at 10 points, although that seems unlikely considering the flat line that has become Zerg here. Week 8, guys, coming up. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of this week. Which was your favorite game? We definitely appreciate all support here at the KCM. So even liking the video or commenting definitely helps out. So thank you guys so much for doing that. Hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you next time.